Controversial opinion time. I am not a huge fan of the Unicron trilogy. Armada, Energon, Cybertron, none of those cartoons nor their toy lines really resonated with me. For whatever reason, none of these series ever jived with me. I never really liked the toys of Armada, not a huge fan of the aesthetics from Energon, and especially not the look of Cybertron. I don't know why, but I've never been a fan of that very chunky, mid-2000s look. Despite my overall dislike for these series, it would be a very egregious oversimplification to say every single aspect of them is bad. There are some very fun designs and some interesting toys that came out of these series. A lot of engineering and articulation was really hamstrung and handicapped during the eras of Armada and Energon, so most of the interesting and well-liked toys from the Unicron trilogy come from Cybertron. The Excelion Hot Rod mold looks fairly interesting, as does the Cybertron Defense Red Alert, and of course, Thunder Blast is a must-have, as she is one of the very few fembots out there. However, I find myself drawn to the repaints and redecos that we would see in later years, rather than the originals. To help hype up the 2007 movie, a few Cybertron and Energon figures were redecoed and repainted in drab military Earth colors, including the little Decepticon, Hardtop. Sharing the same name as his Cybertron counterpart, Hardtop turns into a little dune buggy of indeterminate make and model. Very stylized and very spacey. His original toy was cast in teals, yellow, and purple, and he is now drab, olive, and gray. While it's a lot less interesting than his Cybertron counterpart, I kind of like the drab and dreary military colors. It does give him a little bit of a melancholic presence. Despite being a spacey anime dune buggy, he is supposed to be a relatively realistic quote-unquote Earth vehicle blending in with Sector 7. So he turns into a cute and bouncy dune buggy with real-world military colors. This incongruous nature really gets exacerbated when you stack him up to any of the other 2007 movie figures, which really, really emphasized realistic detail and styling. This continues into robot mode, where he is a very stout and blocky little Decepticon. Despite being a relatively simple robot, he does have some fun hits of detail and color to break up the monotony, including the yellow caution stripes, as well as the bright yellow visor. He also has a silver chest plate with two yellow accents. This combined with the black details around it kind of give off the silhouette of a skull. Now, the main gimmick of Cybertron was the Cyber Planet Key. These were little keys that would toggle gimmicks. You'd put them in the slot and an extra gun or something would pop out. And in Hardtop's case, it takes his sniper rifle and makes it even longer. It's not super exciting, and I guess it's more of a aesthetic preference, really. Despite being released in the 2007 movie toy line, he looks nothing like his contemporaries. When you compare him to Wreckage here, you can see that a lot more real robot and monstrous design elements were put into the movie Decepticons, as opposed to the much more blocky anime stylings that Hardtop exemplifies. Instead, in my opinion, he actually fits in a lot more with the modern Decepticon minibot repaints, like Bug Bite. And in general, he just kind of feels like the Decepticon equivalent of a minibot. Not necessarily an evil version of Beachcomber, for example, but just another vicious little scout that specializes in espionage. Now, obviously, Hardtop did not appear in the 2007 live-action movie. However, he did appear in some of the tie-in comics from IDW Publishing and Titan over in the UK. The only really interesting piece of lore that comes from Hardtop is in his original toy bio, which states that he is the rival to Bumblebee, and he followed him to Earth. It's also stated a shot from Hardtop's sniper rifle is what rendered Bumblebee a mute. Obviously, this contradicts all of the lore that's established in both the movie as well as the comics and should not be treated as canonical in any way, shape, or form. I say that like Transformers doesn't play fast and loose with continuity anyway. Space is warped and time is bendable. So while Hardtop doesn't fit in with the movie figures, I actually think he fits in fairly well with the modern generations figures. There are a lot, and I mean a lot, of Transformers side characters, B-listers, C-listers, D-listers, all the way down to Z-listers, and Hardtop has a home in that range, and he can find a home with any major Decepticon army. 